It's the longest running rivalry in Conference USA and tonight it features two of the hottest teams in the conference as the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky come to Murfreesboro looking for a little bit of revenge against their arch rival in Middle Tennessee. What is going on everybody alongside Dwayne Hickey. I'm Jake Rose and you're watching Conference USA basketball right here on ESPN plus Dwayne tonight is going to be a great game. Both of these teams riding seven game winning streaks. In fact the last time that Western lost a ball game it was to Middle Tennessee less than a month ago in EA Diddle Arena. WKU undefeated in the month of February 7 and 0 Middle Tennessee as you mentioned on a seven game winning streak as well. This is the best robbery not only in Conference USA but across three conferences prior to to that the Sun Belt and then originally in the OVC and we just got word that Western Kentucky will be without two starters in Jarius Hamilton and Luke Frampton that means Davion McKnight and Jamarion Sharp are gonna have to carry a heavier load than normal tonight against middle yeah Davion McKnight the reigning Conference USA player of the week the last time these two teams met he had 24 points five rebounds and then in the middle Jamarion Sharp 7-5 the tallest player in Division One college basketball averaging four and a half blocks per game and Middle Tennessee very guard oriented very focused on the perimeter will put up a lot of deep threes so Josh Jefferson and Donovan Sims are going to be big keys for middle tonight yeah absolutely two very seasoned veterans for this Middle Tennessee squad in the backcourt Sims 22 six rebounds six assists the last time these teams got together and Josh Jefferson had an unbelievable night seven of nine from three point range scoring 31 points on the night he was the engine that drove Middle Tennessee's offense on the 29th of January. It's 100 Miles of Hate coming up next on ESPN. Welcome inside the Murphy Center, just moments away from tip-off. What is the greatest rivalry in Conference USA? 100 miles of hate. Western Kentucky leads the all-time series 97 to 44 in a series that dates back all the way to the Woodrow and Wilson administration pre-World War I, 1914-1915 season. And let's send it over to our public address announcer, Mr. Larry Tolbert, to meet tonight's starting fives. Let's meet the Hilltoppers. Starting, Starting tonight, tonight at a guard, guard a 6'6", 190 pound grad student, student from, from Baton Rouge, Rouge Louisiana, Louisiana, number, number four, four, Josh, Josh Anderson. Anderson. At a guard, a guard a six, five, six, five, 180 pound pounds sophomore, sophomore from, from Dallas, Dallas Texas, Texas, number 13, 13 Sherman, Sherman Brashear. At a guard, a 6'1", 195 pound sophomore, sophomore from, from Shelbyville, Shelbyville Kentucky, Kentucky, number, number 20, Davion McKnight. McKnight. In the, In the pivot, pivot, a 7'5", 235 pound, pound junior, junior from, from Hopkinsville, Hopkinsville Kentucky, Kentucky, number 33, Jamarion Sharp. Sharp. And, and, and a guard, a 6'3", 185 pound, pound grad, grad student, student from, from Heinemann, Kentucky, Kentucky, number 55, Cameron, Cameron Justice. Justice. The Toppers, the toppers are, head are head coached by, by Rick, Rick Stansberry. Stansberry.
Miles of hate and Dwayne, it wouldn't be a rivalry if it didn't mean something just a little bit more. A lot of Conference USA tournament implications on the line tonight. MTSU trying to find a way to get a piece of the Conference USA East title tonight with a win. They will do that. WKU trying to find a way to stay in by position. They're in the second seat in the Eastern Division. A win tonight doesn't guarantee them a bye, but puts them in a really good spot. So late in the season, you're not only playing a rivalry game, you're not only playing for pride, you're playing for seeding in the conference tournament. And Middle Tennessee ensured at least a tie for first place in the East with their win on Thursday night against Marshall, but a win here tonight clinches the East. Mitchell, Jarius, Hamilton, and Luke Frampton out of the starting five tonight for Western Kentucky. Hamilton dealing with a knee injury. Frampton, non-COVID illness. As DeAndre Dishman didn't even get his feet off the hardwood. <laughs> so the starting five tonight for Western Kentucky. Davion McKnight, Cam Justice, Jamarion Sharp as Justice. His three is off the mark to, out of the gate. Josh Anderson making his seventh start tonight. And so is Sherman Brashear with start number three. The AKU starting out on a man-to-man -man defense. Good look for Western to play some zone tonight as Sims misses the first three. Ball is batted out of bounds and will go toward Western. Same old, same old as the starting five for Nick McDevitt, and that's him right there calling the shots. Jefferson, Lawrence, Sims, Dishman, and Millen. Get the nod for Nick McDevitt and what is also senior night here in the glass house. Tough defense by Millen. And Western gets it back. And McKnight able to finish. Nice tap by Cameron Justice. Yeah, nice heads up play by Justice and Middle Tennessee that time. Great play defensively, but then got a little sloppy on the offensive end and WKU made him pay. Backdoor cut to Millen. And Millen could be a key tonight for Middle Tennessee, Jake. He did not score in the contest at WKU. Did not score in the win on Thursday night against Marshall either. Had just one shot attempt in 13 minutes. Three on the way from Anderson, all net. Well, Josh Anderson is one of those players, when he gets hot, he can score in bunches. He is a 40% three-point shooter, and they are going to need him to knock down some shots as there's Justice again getting it done on defense. Uh, WKU has scouted Middle Tennessee well. That's twice they've taken the ball to the high post, and twice it's been stolen away. And Western's going to have to get some offense generated from their defense as they are going to be without Hamilton and Frampton. About 25 points per game between the two of them. But already short bench Western Kentucky team as Lawrence will put up a three from the corner and roll it home. Yeah, Eli Lawrence, Jake has played well this seven game stretch. He's averaging about three points more per game in this last seven. The winning streak for Middle Tennessee. Double figures in three of his last four, including 18 on Thursday night against Marshall to go along with nine rebounds as Anderson's going to do a step back. And Sims comes away with it. Yeah, nice body there on Sharp by Dishman. Sims pull up Jay short and cleared by Justice. Justice, a one-two step in the lane, Cam Justice. Boy, what a nice crossover. He just got Donovan Sims moving one way, crossed over the dribble, went straight to the glass. One of the best three-point shooters 
in the conference. Not afraid to attack the rim either here early. Western with an early four point lead, nine to five. As Millen connects. Got to be careful. Millen turned and looked at the WKU bench after that. Officials are really tight on that this year. McKnight lost it, but Josh Jefferson was the last to touch it, and Western will maintain possession as Buford and Cam Weston will check in for Middle Tennessee, and that's one advantage that Middle Tennessee has before we found out that Western Kentucky was going to be shorthanded. Very reliable bench for Nick McDivitt coming into tonight's game. Yeah, Middle Tennessee is going to play a nine-man rotation. WKU have been playing a seven-man for most of the year, but you look at their minutes in conference play, and it's really been a six-person rotation in conference play, and two of those guys aren't available tonight. Yeah, Sherman Brashear getting the start tonight, just his third this season. Average about eight minutes a game. Five on the shot clock for McKnight. Going around the corner, and Brashear just got it off in time. Couldn't get the three to land. McDevitt, one of the shot clock violation, not going to get it. Lawrence is stuck into a three. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence coming out strong. two-point lead. We're just about four and a half minutes into this one, and this is the loudest it has been in the Murphy Center in quite some time as McKnight had it deflected by Dishman. Lawrence again. And this place would have erupted had that dropped. Justice is going to put up a three and run it. And Weston and, uh, Weston and Dishman kind of fought, fighting for the rebound, knocked it away from one another. The ball will stay with WKU. It's a two-point advantage for Middle Tennessee with 15.01 to go in the first. Stay with us. 100 miles of hate on ESPN+. Plus. The softy Eli Lawrence, the lefty sophomore, came into this season 45 made three pointers in his first two years. He has 45 coming into tonight, and Dwayne has already knocked down two here early. Yeah, he's knocked down two here early. We won't tell him that you just called I, him a I softie. Sure I called him a softie. <laughs> but we won't tell him that. He's not soft from beyond the arc tonight, that's for sure. In Middle Tennessee, looking for another big performance from beyond the arc. Josh Jefferson, a month ago, seven of nine. So maybe tonight it's Eli Lawrence's turn. Sophomore, lefty, Got softie. It. Got it. It's a, new, <laughs> it's a new thing I'm starting. Sorry, Eli. Ball stays with Western as Buford knocked it out of Anderson's hands. Just look at Nick McDevitt, Middle Tennessee, 21 and 7, coming into tonight's game. 11 and 3 in conference play. Undefeated here at the Murphy Center as McKnight. Step back three, knocks it down. And that was pure. It looked good from the time it left his hand. Excuse me, middle 12 and three in conference play. First in the East. Jefferson with a comeback. This is it to the right, but there's T. Leonard to clean it up. And that young man coming off the bench is Middle Tennessee's energizer bunny, if you will. Yeah, between T. Leonard and Josh Anderson, there is definitely a chance to see some highlights here tonight as McKnight's jumper is short on a quick shot. Western comes into this game 17 and 11, 9 and 6 in conference as T. Leonard's three is no good. Middle coming off a really rough shooting night despite winning against Marshall when Middle with just four of 24 from behind the arc as Anderson is fouled on the drive. We get Buford, I believe. He sort of head faked Buford and went right past him. Buford trying to recover to get 
back in defensive position, commits the foul. First foul between either team so far tonight as we get a second look at it. Probably could have got Leonard on the drive as well. Actually, they did give it to Leonard instead of Buford, my bad. That's the last time I'm listening to you, Glenn. Can't blame you for that one. And Anderson, an 81% free throw shooter, eighth best in the conference, misses the first. As Tyler Millen will check in for Buford, there's a look at Rick Stansberry, his sixth season at Western Kentucky, looking for his fifth straight 20 win season since taking over in Bowling Green as Anderson hits the first, second. And he gets a win tonight, it'll be 50 games over 500. Or he'll have, excuse me, I'll have 50 more wins than losses at WKU in just six seasons. All tied up at 13 apiece. Christian Fussell just checked in. Not afraid to put it up. And Brashear comes away with a rebound. This is a Western Kentucky team that rebounds on the defensive end very, very well. Second best in the conference. And shot. This is the easy dunk. And now Leonard at the other end. Transition defense to offense. Middle Tennessee, when they were playing their best on Thursday night, that's what they did. And that's what they want to do again here this evening. Nobody in college basketball has more dunks than Jamarion Sharp. And he missed a bunny on the last possession. McKnight steps back. Tough shot. Weston will put it up. Got it. You know, Cam Weston, we give him an opportunity to kind of get his feet set. He's deadly from out there. Middle four of nine from distance here early. Already had the same amount of threes as they did on Thursday night against Marshall. But before that game, Middle had been lights out, shooting 43% as a team from behind the arc in their previous eight games. For Shear, the lefty. Response. Good patience offensively that time by WKU. Justice thought about the three, thought better of it. Got it to Brashear, who knocked it down. Brashear hasn't even played in three of the last four games for Western Kentucky. We talked about their short bench. Miller in the air, and there's Sharp swatting it away. Justice in trouble. The lob to Leonard! Touch the sky, T. Leonard! A little cheering going on down in Snyder, Texas right now. And Cam Weston saw it the entire way as Brashear's going to put up another three. Wow. One-point ball game. 20 to 19 as Sherman Brashear has knocked down two threes for Western. Now Millen with a response. Fussell can't get the follow. Anderson on the drive, smooth finish. Yeah, and give Anderson a lot of credit there. He got that ball tipped as he was crossing over, really didn't have control of it until he got to the rim. Great athletic play by Anderson. Western has knocked down their last three shots. They now have a one-point lead as we are going back and forth here early at the glass house. Christian Fussell getting in on the action. Uh, 6'10", Fussell out there dropping three-pointers. But on the defensive end, he's not used to looking up to people. He has to look up to Sharp. So that's going to be an interesting battle to watch. Fussell just a 23% three-point shooter on the season. That's his 10th connection from deep as Justice loses it again. Weston with the finish. Nice cuff there by Weston. Middle Tennessee loves to get out in transition. Letting that defense lead to offense. McKnight in trouble. Brashear again. This one just glances off the rim as McKnight and Weston fighting for it. And Weston lands out of bounds with it as we've got a line change coming in for both teams. 
But first, we're going to take a break. We've got a doozy going on here at the Glass House. Middle on top by four. Welcome back to the Murphy Center. There's a look at our head coaches, Rick Stansberry and Nick McDivitt. Stansberry trying to get to 500 against Middle Tennessee coming into tonight's game, four and five against Middle, while Nick McDivitt trying to get the season sweep against Western Kentucky for the first time in his career and what would just be the 10th time in this long-standing rivalry. And Jake, also, you look at Stansberry record across his entire career, 413, 237. He's trying to get to 20 wins for the 15th time in 21 years. McKnight, tough shot in the lane. Third bucket for Davion McKnight. Two-point lead for Middle Tennessee, 25-23. Looking for their 17th straight home win here at the Glass House, dating back to last season. And this their last home game of the regular season. And there's a turnover. Anderson, Brashear, McKnight, Cozart, and Noah Stansberry, son of Rick Stansberry, getting his first action tonight. Anderson, step back, short. Mentioned how shorthanded Western Kentucky was coming in to this ball game, but also right before tip finding out Jarius Hamilton and Luke Frampton would be out of the lineup as well. As Lawrence in traffic had it deflected. Lawrence stays with it. And Isaiah Cozart, who's just checked in, gets the block. For sheer step back, short. Weston, one on three. Now Dishman on the block against Cozart. The sky hook from Dishman. Yeah, Dishman's kind of picked that shot up in the second half of this season. He's been very effective with it. Shades of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar from DeAndre Dishman. What a touch with that sky hook. Stansberry in trouble, turns it over. Weston tried to find Dishman. Dishman lost it and rolled it towards Press Row, and it goes to Western Kentucky. So when we come back, it'll be Western Kentucky ball as they trail by four, looking for a little bit of revenge against their arch rival, Middle Tennessee. Here's a look at Davion McKnight, the sophomore do-it-all point guard for the Hilltoppers, one of four players in college basketball this season that averages 15 points, five boards, and five assists. And just his sophomore year, the reigning Conference USA Player of the Week, seven points for the kid from Shelbyville, Kentucky, here early tonight. Yeah, averaging 23-plus over the last three games. And one of the rare guards as he's in trouble right there. It's not much of a three-point shooter. As here's the lob to Sharp. Can't handle it. A little ping pong there. Ball winds up and butts his hands, and I believe they're going to get DeAndre Dishman on the foul. Let's see. No, no actually going to give it to Tyler Millen. You see it right here. The ball goes to the rim. Sharp can't get his hands on it, but Butts is there to clean up. Jalen Butts, the redshirt senior forward from Fort Wayne, Indiana, has not played in the last eight ball games. As we've talked about, very short-handed Western Kentucky roster tonight. It's the second. Three-point advantage for Middle Tennessee in what has been a back-and-forth contest here early at the Murphy Center. He is Dwayne Hickey, I am Jake Rose. Thank you for joining us 
tonight on ESPN Plus. Sims gets an open look in the corner. Can't knock it down, and McKnight clears. McKnight taking it himself, and Dishman tangled him up, and it'll stay with Western. Yeah, good rake of the basketball right here. You can see on the replay, watch Dishman just rake it out of his hands, but loses his balance, lands on the baseline with contact to the basketball, and the good defensive play, unfortunately, not rewarded. 24 on the shot clock for Western. Justice got a clean look at it and kicked it off the back iron. Gonna need a big night from him. Averaging 14 and a half points, second leading scorer for Western Kentucky is Cameron Justice. Dishman recycled by Sharp, the nation's second leading shot blocker. Has two already tonight. That's the 27th time this season he's had a game with at least two blocks. McKnight in trouble, loses it, and then a frustration foul on Jefferson. And that's the first foul going against Western Kentucky. Mentioned during the break, before the break, only one foul called, still just three, with almost 14 minutes played in the first half. Well, that's one of the things you, you look at if you're looking at numbers. WKU, the least, has the least fouls in America whistled against them per game, about a, just a shade over 11. Fussell, another three. This one's long as Anderson and Buford Duke it out for the rebound. Call going against Buford. So a little full court pressure here by the Blue Raiders. Three point ball game. Western Kentucky looking for their 40th win in Murfreesboro. 39 and 27 all time here in the mid-state against Middle Tennessee. Five on the shot clock for Justice. Running out of room. They're gonna call it a jump ball. Justice was looking for a timeout, not gonna get it. And Middle Tennessee takes the possession away from Western. You mentioned that record. Jake, it's hard to believe as, as good as this series has been since the Woodrow Wilson administration <laughs> that WKU has such a large advantage wins uh, in the win column in this series. It's just it's, it's hard to kind of believe because there's been so many close good basketball games in this rivalry. If you look historically, Western Kentucky is one of the more consistent programs in college basketball history, maybe not all the accolades because they're not in a power five conference or what you would consider to be a traditional power. But in terms of consistency and conference championships and regular season wins, there are very, very few programs. You see Millen going to the hoop. I'm sorry, Eli Lawrence going to the hoop there. And Sharp is going to be whistled for the foul, sending Lawrence to the free throw line. Second team foul against Western, first on Marion Sharp as the lefty Eli Lawrence hits the first. First point for Middle Tennessee in about two and a half minutes. Davion McKnight will check back in for Stansberry. Rick Stansberry having to do quite a bit of shuffling with the lineup here tonight without Jarius Hamilton and Luke Frampton. Hamilton out with a knee injury, Frampton out with a non-COVID illness. Got that news just before tip as Lawrence hits both free throws. So Western asking for a lot of production from a handful of guys that don't see a lot of action. As Anderson up top to Sharp. And someone got lost defensively. I think it was Fussell. Fussell came up to stop the penetration. And that equals lob. To Sharp. Sharp, seven foot five out of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, his first season here at Western as 
Weston was left wide open. And McKnight steals the rebound. Up ahead to Justice. He can't get it to four. Morris on the drive against Sharp. Contact, no call. McKnight loses it. Now here comes Middle. Jefferson sets his feet. Wow. That's just a very quick and crazy sequence, Jake. Frantic pace here in the first half between these two teams. What's been a bit of a low-scoring half. Both of these teams average above 75 points per contest. Of course, Middle had a low-scoring contest on Thursday night against Marshall as well. Anderson, one on the shot clock, too strong, but fighting for it. But Weston comes away with it. Weston in traffic. Dropped it off for Buford, and a foul going against Western with 349. Might be getting Anderson here. Let's see. It is. It's going to be the third team foul against Western Kentucky, and the first on the senior, Anderson. It's a three-point advantage for Middle Tennessee, looking to stay perfect at home against their arch rival. The Murphy Center tonight is packed. And the students have filled out the Blue Zoo. All of Murfreesboro is here tonight to root on their Blue Raiders, the only men's and women's basketball programs to be undefeated at home in the entire country. That's a pretty special graphic there, pretty special statistic if, if you're a Blue Raider fan and certainly must defend the home court in any conference in America, and MTSU is doing it better than any school in America this season. Middle struggling offensively the last few minutes, just one for their last nine. No field goals in the last four minutes and 23 seconds. Middle on top by three. Jefferson puts up a three and buries it. First yeah. bucket tonight for Josh Jefferson. Ends that drought. Middle Tennessee needed a little offensive pick-me-up there, and Jefferson gave it to him. Jefferson could use a little offensive pick-me-up as well. Last couple of games really struggling from the floor. Just 8 of 22 coming into tonight in the last couple of contests, including just 3 of 12 from deep. McKnight in traffic. Sharp there to clean it up. Yeah, DeAndre Dishman giving up a foot at 6'6", six, six, having a hard time keeping Sharp off the boards. This is not a very good offensive rebounding Western Kentucky team. 13th in the conference, just eight offensive boards per game. But they're coming off a season-high 15 offensive rebounds in their win against Old Dominion. Buford will step into a three and knock it down. Middle Tennessee getting a little production from off the bench now. Just what Nick McDevitt would like to see. Seven made three here tonight for Middle. Similar outcome in the first meeting between Western and Middle when Middle knocked down eight first half threes on their way to 15 long balls in the road win. Well, Jake, it'll be interesting to see with this short bench for WKU, we're looking a little gassed right here at the end of the first half. We'll see if Middle can take advantage of it. And as you said at the top of the broadcast, this is a Western Kentucky team, shorthanded or not, as there's the lob and the finish from Buford. But this is a Western Kentucky team whose starters all play 30-plus minutes, and they're without two starters tonight. So a lot of guys that don't get a lot of run getting some run here tonight on the road against Middle. Justice, tough step back. McKnight, offensive board. Sharp with a big follow. Boy, it, middle did everything they could that possession except get the rebound. They blocked Sharp out the first time. They couldn't block him out the second time. Seven-point lead for middle. Weston step back three. No, T. Leonard looking for the call on the follow-up, not getting it. 
Western trying to close the gap with 1.15 left in the half. Anderson taking it himself, but Buford got a hand on it. They give Buford a lot of credit there. He's been, Anderson's got him twice tonight. Wasn't going to get him the third time. He stays in front of him, gets just enough of the basketball. See so right, a little crossover. He's going to go baseline on him and give Buford a lot of credit. Staying in front, not committing the foul, and getting a piece of the basketball. 20 on the shot clock for Western, trailing by seven. Justice, well off. And after making his first couple of layups, Cam Justice has gone cold. Missing his last six shots. Here comes another lob. Buford collects this time as Leonard almost loses it. We're under a minute here in the first half. Leonard on the drive through Sharp, gets his own foul. And then Nick McDevitt calls a quick timeout. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's to calm down the freshman Leonard, who a couple of times has turned to that Western Kentucky bench to let him know what's going on this time, getting in the face of Javarion Sharp. And that's kind of hard to do at 7-5. You know, Leonard, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, looking at both teams from a shooting percentage standpoint, both teams shooting at or above their season. Oh, actually, middle shooting at or above their season average. WKU is at 36% normally a 47 percent shooting team from the field so give the blue raider defense a little credit here in the first half they're making it tough on wku even with the short-handed bench you know hamilton and frampton as you mentioned jake about 25 points a game but the other piece to that too is is they're pulling down between them about nine rebounds a game and you look at that rebounding stat right now middle tennessee is actually being out rebounded 21 to 19 so give the toppers a lot of credit being short-handed they're still going to the boards. Yeah, six offensive rebounds. Big for Western, keeping him in this ball game. Middle Tennessee's bench, 21 points tonight for the guys coming off the pine, led by T. Lawrence. Excuse me, T. Leonard with eight. McKnight left hand drive, no. Sharp can't get the follow. And now middle can hold for the last shot. Leading by nine. Fussell steps into a three. Here comes Justice. And turns it over looking for Brashear. And middle will have one final opportunity with three seconds left. Yeah, Nick McDevitt giving a little coaching there to Christian Fussell. Not the shot middle wanted on that last possession. Sims pull up three. Just short. But middle will head to the break with a nine-point advantage. The Blue Raiders struggling in their last outing from behind the arc. But tonight, Red Hot seven long balls. For Big Blue gives him a nine point lead as we head to the half. Welcome back to the Murphy Center where Middle Tennessee has a nine point lead over Western Kentucky 39 to 30. And Western Kentucky shorthanded without Luke Frampton and Jarius Hamilton. Got word right before tip off that they would be out of tonight's game. Hamilton out with an knee injury. Frampton feeling a little bit under the weather, non COVID illness. And offensively, Dwayne, Western Kentucky has got to figure it out. Just one for their last nine to end the first half. Yeah, and a team that shoots 47% from the floor on the season, shooting 34% in the first half. They certainly did not shoot the basketball as they're accustomed to in half number one. Middle Tennessee knocked down seven three pointers. In the first half, getting points from a plethora of players. Eight different Blue Raiders with points in the first half as McKnight, wild shot. Eli Lawrence with good defense there, staying in front of McKnight. Seven first half points for Davion McKnight, averaging just under 16 this season as Lawrence will put up another three. And Brashear clears. Now Anderson. 
trying to give the toppers a little bit of juice to start the second. Yeah, Middle Tennessee that time, long rebound, didn't get back on defense and paid for it. Seven point ball game. Both teams coming into tonight's matchup. Seven straight wins as Sims tried to get over Sharp. Tall order as Sharp recycled the shot. Third block tonight for the big fella. Give, uh, give Sims credit. Not many people are willing to go in there, Jake. He went in, got the shot over Sharp, but the rebound put back was blocked. Millen loses it in the paint, and Western will take over. Jamarion Sharp, six first half points. Shooting 72% from the floor this season. That is clearly the best in Conference USA by about eh, 18 percentage points <laughs> or so. But only shoots about five times a game. McKnight rejected at the rim. Jefferson might have got a hand on it. Sims in transition. Dropped it off for Millen and Sharp says no. Justice, corner three, short. His shooting woes continue. Good job, Middle Tennessee was out rebounding in the first half. One of the keys for them in the second half was get to the glass, and that time Donovan Sims did a nice job. Four blocks tonight for Jamarion Sharp as Sims in rhythm. Fishman taps it out to Lawrence, and he'll give it a try and knock it down. Good hustle play that time. For Middle Tennessee, Dishman on the tip. Third three tonight for Eli Lawrence. Three of five from distance is the sophomore from Atlanta. Justice off the curl, got it. Big three from Cam Justice. He got off to a hot start, Jake, and then struggled through the rest of the first half. That's a big shot for Western Kentucky. First three tonight for Justice. 40% from distance. Third best mark in the conference. Morse, another three wide open. This one is well off. Maybe too open. Had too much time to think. Sharp on the lob. A little bit of touch for the big fella. That's a quick 5-0 run by WKE to turn, trim this lead in half. Five-point advantage. Millen will step into a three. And a quick timeout taken as... Tyler Millen knocks down his second three tonight. That's eight points for the sophomore from Calera, Alabama, as middle leads 45-37. The Murphy Center is getting a new basketball court in 2022. What should it look like? Well, you can decide. Send in your design and be entered to win Two free Middle Tennessee men's and women's basketball season tickets for the 2022-23 season. Check out GoBlueRaiders.com for more information. That sounds pretty fun. I'm not uh, the most artistically inclined individual. Pretty good with a set of crayons and some colored pencils, but uh, I don't know. That sounds... I'll, I'll give you my entry. You out go, of my skill range. It's definitely out of mine. Middle leads 45-37 as Jamarion Sharp can't handle the lob from the top. And that's going to be a turnover going against Western. And that uh, pass a little bit out of the range of Sharp. Eight turnovers tonight for Western Kentucky. Buford to Dishman. Now Jefferson. And Sharp does such a great job of clogging up the paint as Weston stays with it. And now Lawrence finishes. Good hustle by Middle Tennessee. Just kept going after the basketball.
Lead back to 10 for the third time tonight for Middle Tennessee. That's their largest lead. Looking to sweep the season series against Western Kentucky after knocking off the toppers at EA Dibble Arena back on January 29th. As that's a tough fadeaway from McKnight. Eight point road victory for middle last time out against Western as that three is well off from Buford. Anderson on the drive fighting through contact no call. Now Buford on the run out. Jefferson back to Buford and one. Great recognition two man game between Buford and Jefferson, but it was all started by a powerful defensive board by DeAndre Dishman. And Rick Stansberry letting the officiating staff hear it, not getting the call on one end, but when we come back, Justin Buford going for the and one as middle leads by a dozen. Justin Buford, the freshman from Selma, Alabama, with seven points tonight, doubling up his season average. And he's at the line looking to complete the three-point play as Middle is on top by a dozen against a shorthanded Western Kentucky squad. Middle on a 7-0 run, the last minute 45 after Western went on a little streak to cut the lead in half. So a big response from Middle Tennessee as Buford can't get the roll off the free throw. Middle 23 points off the bench tonight compared to just one for Western Kentucky whose bench sees as few minutes as anybody else in the country as McKnight Struggling through contact, gets the call, and that's going against Christian Fussell, his first, much to the chagrin of the faithful here at the glass house. Yeah, McKnight loses the basketball, recovers it. Contact with Fussell, and Fussell is whistled for the foul. And he, as you can hear, the Murphy Center faithful not in agreement. Fussell not quite vertical as McKnight 78% free throw shooter has his first point of the second half. McKnight does so many things so well. Not just a scorer, but a very good rebounder, especially for a guard. But one of the best distributors of the basketball in the entire country, almost six assists per game, paces the way for the entire conference. Just a sophomore, taking a big jump from his freshman year. Last season. Weston drops it off for Buford. Justice got a piece of it. Now Sharp gets all of it. And Middle throws it away. And Mitt McDennett not happy on the Blue Raiders sideline, lobbying for a call. Yeah, both coaches in the last seconds have been lobbying for a call. That one looked like the first one looked like the foul. I think the second one's a clean block, and that's what the Murphy Center faithful were not happy about was the first block, not the second. And if that's the fifth block for Sharp, that'd be the 14th time this season that he's had five blocks in a game. Had 10 in his first career start against Alabama A&M when he had a triple-double. McKnight, tough fadeaway. Long rebound to Sims. One of three players in college basketball history the last 25 years to have a triple-double in their first career start. Just amazing. And for being 7'5 and for being so young, he's very, very nimble. Moves very well for a big guy. Sims will step into a three. And Leonard skying for the rebound knocks it out of bounds. He's lobbying and he thought Anderson got a piece of it. The officials are not having any of that conversation. Tyler Mellon will check in as Buford will take a seat. Go, 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 go. 
Middle Tennessee leads by 10. Looking to lock up first place in the East before heading into the last week of the season as McKnight, tough drive, got the kick off the rim. That's Western's, Western Kentucky's first field goal in just over four minutes. McKnight now in double figures with 11. Four of 16 from the field. Is Davion McKnight having to carry an extra load without Frampton and Hamilton in the lineup? T. Leonard loses it on the way up. Justice short, but then there's Brashear with another offensive rebound. Eighth offensive board for Western here tonight. Fussell's going to be whistled for a foul. It's going to be the second on Fussell. And the second on middle. Get another look. McKnight certainly initiating the contact. Crowd wanted to walk. Probably could have called it, but certainly a lot of contact between a few different players on that one, and it's a foul against middle. Yeah, Andrew Walton had a tough call there because he couldn't see the offensive player who was masked by two defenders. And this is going against Western, a moving screen. And Eli Lawrence is down. And Lawrence hops up, get another look. Yeah, there, you see right there just a big old hip check from the 7-5 center of Western Kentucky. Sharp with a sharp hip or elbow there, I guess. Well played, Dwayne. Well played. Uh, it was sort of weak, but it's I, right. I, I, thank you for it's, it. It's, <laughs> it's not as bad as the softy Eli Lawrence. So. <laughs> we each get one. Exactly. Eight-point gap for middle. Sims looking for help, finds Dishman. Through shot. Well, that Dishman knew exactly what he wanted to do there and used the rim and a spin move to protect himself. Anderson slicing through the lane, can't get it to fall with the left hand. Western shooting just 34% from the floor. Sims. But Lawrence with offensive board. Millen throws it as Jefferson just able to save it with eight on the clock. Jefferson pull up three, well short, and gathered by Western. Drive and kick for Sheer wide open in the corner, knocks it down. And Bashir has had a night. Third three tonight for the lefty sophomore from Dallas. And the kid from the Lone Star State is a shooter tonight. Three threes for Sherman Bashir, making his third start on the season. Middle on top by seven. Jamarion Sharp came into this game with 125 blocks, the second most in college basketball, and that's already a Western Kentucky single season record. He has more blocks than 89% of Division I college basketball teams. He has five tonight to go along with eight points and nine rebounds currently on the bench. Getting a little R&R. And Middles going right to the rack. It's Dishman trying to fight through Cozart, but Cozart was stout. Western on a little bit of a run. Middle got the lead up to 12. Now only lead by seven. A lot of dribbling from Anderson. Now Brashear, who knocked down the three before the break. McKnight in traffic, stripped by Dishman. And then Brashear jumps on it. And heads up play by Sherman Brashear to get the steal and call timeout. Right here you see the strip. Dishman trying to get it ahead to Lawrence. Lawrence has it picked clean by Brashear. And Brashear just a hustle play, diving on the floor to get possession of the basketball and keep it for Western Kentucky. 
So Western comes into this game with a seven game winning streak. Before that, they were on a five game skid. And Rick Stansberry has done an excellent job with this Western Kentucky Hilltoppers squad this year. They were picked third in the preseason poll, but had some issues coming into the season, getting some players eligible in the transfer portal. And they've been playing with six, maybe seven players in their rotation during conference play. But they've been playing excellent basketball the last month or so. Seven straight wins coming into this one. Yeah, certainly they have played well. And again, trying to they're trying to get that by position in the conference tournament. That's why tonight's game is so big for them. Middle Tennessee trying to, as you mentioned earlier, lock up the Eastern Division crown if they can win tonight but again right now especially when you look at what these teams have from a schedule standpoint this is WKU's eighth game in 24 days it's middle's ninth game in 22 days and it's a packed house tonight in the Murphy Center always a good crowd for 100 miles of hate but especially so when the home team is undefeated on their home court Big crowd with the Blue Zoo student section tonight as Millen's going to be charged with a foul on the dribble drive from Justice. Second against Millen, third against Middle in the half. Look at Cam Justice, who essentially came out of retirement. Did not play last year, was a grad assistant. Got an extra year of eligibility from the NCAA. Joined the squad three games into the season. The day after he got married. And he's going to pick up or draw another foul, this time on the baseline. So imagine this. You finish your basketball career in 2020. You think you're done. You've already got your master's. You go get a sales job. Hey, you think, I miss basketball, I'm going to come back and be a grad assistant. And then all of a sudden, a year later, the team that you just recently played for needs you as he's going to be fouled on a three-point attempt. And that's been the story of Cam Justice coming back to Western Kentucky after taking a year off and graduating with his Masters and becoming the second leading scorer on this Western Kentucky squad. And you look right there, Eli Lawrence just makes a bad decision there. Middle has picked up three fouls inside 30 seconds coming out of that break. And one of the things we haven't touched on, Jake, is that WKU scores six more points from the free throw line than do their opponents. And so far this season, they've made 86 more free throws than their opponents have attempted. Yeah, in the Stansberry era, Western Kentucky has shot more than 1,400 free throws than their opponents as Justice knocks down all three. And we've got ourselves a ball game here in the glass house. Four-point lead for middle. Looking to stay perfect at home. Weston on the drive, back door to Jefferson. And without the big man in there, Middle Tennessee got into the paint and got a good look. Just the second bucket tonight for Middle's leading scorer, Josh Jefferson, had a three in the first half. Now with five points. Justice, tough shot. Can't get it to go. Ball almost tipped in by Weston. And now Jefferson off and running. Now middle will reset. We're looking a little bit out of sorts on this possession, Jake. Weston throws it off the shoes of Jefferson. And Anderson jumped the passing lane. Now middle will have three seconds on the shot clock. And you said middle all out of sorts on that possession. Yeah, WKU's kind of turned the defensive pressure up, and they're going to, of course, bring Sharp back in. Kozar's going to head to the bench. Stansbury didn't like that last look at the rim for middle Tennessee.
Three seconds on the shot clock for middle. Lawrence to trigger. Weston off the inbounds. Almost banked it in. And Anderson comes away with it. And then a foul by Lawrence. And second on Lawrence. Yeah, you see Lawrence just kind of trying to run with Anderson there and just sort of forces him out of bounds. And it was contact in the midsection. Yeah, just because you have your hands in the air like you're not trying to foul doesn't mean it's not a foul. Second on Lawrence, fifth against middle, excuse me, sixth against middle. And a six-point lead for middle. McKnight on the drive, can't get it to fall. Tough night for Davion McKnight, four of 17 from the floor is Western Kentucky's leading score. Does have 11 points. Jefferson off the curl, short, and middle with an offensive board. Weston step back three. Jake, right now, Middle Tennessee just can't buy a bucket. Middle one for their last seven. Still keeping Western at arm's length. Litter got a piece of it. Western bench. One of the goaltending call. Stansberry looking for an explanation. But as it stands, it's going to be a block. Middle has a six point gap on the visiting Hilltopper. Stay with us on ESPN Plus. Rick Stansberry. Cam Justice and the rest of the Western Kentucky bench thought that this was a goaltend. It's called a block on the floor and a block it will stay as T. Leonard got a piece of it, according to the officials, on the way up. So Western will get the ball with seven seconds on the shot clock, trailing by six. Justice, three on the clock. And another moving screen going against Sharp. Second one tonight where he's trying to set that high screen, Jake, and he just doesn't get set or as the Middle Tennessee defender works over the top, he just moves with the defender and creates the foul. Third team foul against Western Kentucky. It'll have six. Marion Sharp in to protect the rim. As Weston loses it on the way out of bounds, but Dishman stays with it. A tough play there by DeAndre Dishman. And once again, does a good job using the rim to protect his shot. Lead back to eight for middle. They've led by as many as 12. Anderson spin in the lane, hangs in the air. Pretty move. Boy, that, he's got some. He's got some skills, Jake. That's just. He got Buford moving exactly what he wanted, how he wanted him to, made the spin in the paint, and got the easy bucket. Anderson in his fifth year. Going to be the first ever in Western Kentucky basketball history to have five letters in his athletic career. Part of the Conference USA all preseason team. Nice backdoor. Leonard is going to be fouled by Sharp. <laughs> Right here, you see Leonard go up and under once again, trying to use the backboard and the rim to protect himself. Does a good job, and Sharp picks up his third. Actually, four. That's actually four on Jamarion Sharp. That's a big, big foul. An already shorthanded Western Kentucky team. Could soon be without. There's centerpiece on both ends of the floor as Leonard hits the first free throw. Of course, Jarius Hamilton and Luke Frampton both out tonight. And Leonard splits a pair.
56 49 six ticks left here in this one last home game for middle tennessee this season before they hit the road close out the conference usa regular season mcknight pull up jumper and the woes continue for the lefty middle heads to charlotte on wednesday night and then closes up the season in Norfolk against Old Dominion before the Conference USA Tournament as Lawrence wide open three. And Weston. One of the problems with the zone, Jake, is if you don't have a box out assignment, Middle Tennessee with an offensive board. Dishman fading away over Sharp. And DeAndre Dishman showing a little bit of touch. Six second half points for the kid from Lexington, Kentucky. Now Anderson on the drive, too strong. Sharp can't follow again. And he just found out a basketball game. Well, let's check. It's either on him or Anderson. I think they're going to get yeah. 33. And a frustration foul on Jamarion Sharp. Yeah, Anderson goes down. Sharp tries to dunk it, doesn't get it. And Dishman pulls the rebound, and Sharp just goes over his back. So Sharp will finish the night with eight points, 11 rebounds, five blocks. 14th time this season that Sharp has had at least five blocks in a ball game. And his day is done with five minutes left. So now it falls to Isaiah Cozart to protect the paint for the Hilltoppers. And that might give Middle Tennessee offensively a little room to breathe in the paint now. They go right back door to the rim. Leonard can't get the up and under as Justice has another rebound. Sixth rebound tonight for Cam Justice. Justice dribbling through the entire defense as Anderson will put up a three. And cleared by Eli Lawrence. The Blue Raiders now, Jake, going to take their time and work their offense. Western now one for their last nine on offense. Leonard tried to find Dishman in the paint. Justice salab to no one. Almost looked like he was caught in between shooting and lobbing. And we're going to take a break. Final media timeout as Middle has a nine point advantage trying to sweep the season series against Western. There's the remaining schedule for the Blue Raiders on the road to wrap up the Conference USA regular season before they head to Frisco to try and win the entire conference in the Conference USA tournament. Of course, Western Kentucky has been in that championship game for the last three years. But what a job Nick McDevitt has done in his fourth season. This is the first time in his Middle Tennessee tenure that he's actually had a full roster of scholarship players. And, and what a difference it's made for this squad. They didn't get out to the greatest start, as you mentioned. Lost their first two games in conference play, but have been 12-1 and one since. And they have not lost to an Eastern Division team this season. Dishman wide open lane, but Kozart closes the gap real quick. Tell you what, WKU's got a couple of guys who can block some shots. That was a just a great play by Kozart. Verticality went straight up, got the ball, made no contact. Offensively, both teams really struggling in the second half. Combined 31.5% from the floor. Lawrence misses everything. It's kind of indicative of how the second half has gone offensively for both teams. Brashear, another three. And off Kozart. How about the minutes that Sherman Brashear has given Western Kentucky making just his third start tonight, filling in after 
Jarius Hamilton and Luke Frampton were ruled out just before the start of this game. But the kid that hasn't played in three of the last four ball games didn't even play against Middle last month. He's knocked down three threes tonight. Yeah, and they, he's get him 33 minutes off having to start in, replace, uh, in, in place of a couple of players who aren't here tonight. Yeah, normally averages about eight minutes per contest. Weston's in trouble. Finally gets rid of it. And then Dishman turns it over. <laughs> A back and forth of who doesn't want the ball. And finally, Middle comes away with it. Jefferson finishes. Lead back to 11 for Middle. I think you're seeing a little bit of fatigue right now in this WKU squad. As you can see Anderson kind of breathing hard, bringing the ball up the court. Yeah, mentioned it all night, but a short bench when things are going well for Western Kentucky. As Justice must have stepped out of bounds. I think he stepped right into the corner, actually. So sideline or baseline, it was one of the two, maybe both. The numbers won't show it. Cameron Justice, 10 points, just three of 13 from the floor, one of seven from deep. But he has been all over the place. Six rebounds to go along with five steals and five assists. Yeah. Tough night for, I guess you would call him a senior. He's already graduated twice. <laughs> so maybe a doctorate? <laughs> maybe he's working on it. Mm -hmm. Jefferson wide open in the corner. Josh Jefferson not having the kind of night he wanted to have, but that's another big three-pointer. And that might be the dagger as Middle has their largest lead tonight of 14, but McKnight still playing hard. That young man has got game. He can take it to the rack, can shoot it from outside, and you just saw a little fallaway mid-range game there. Yeah, just 5 of 21 from the floor, but he's been asked to do a lot as Jefferson again. And Buford another point. Middle now with 14 offensive rebounds. Four above their average as Weston hangs in the air and draws the foul against Kozar. And at that last, last offensive board, you saw Nick McDevitt right there pictured, telling his team to back it out. He wanted them to milk the clock. We're under a minute and a half. He wanted them to take as much time off that game clock as they could. Anytime you lose to your rival, it's going to leave a sour taste in your mouth. But I think Rick Stansberry can leave Murfreesboro, his whole team with their heads held high. They've played really, really tough tonight against a Middle Tennessee team that has really come alive the last month and a half, especially at home. But Western was almost coming into this game with, I want to say, one hand tied behind their back. And I keep saying shorthanded, but really at a disadvantage. Certainly at a disadvantage. You were playing players who were averaging single digit minutes. You've got two players who between the two of them averaged 25 points a game and nine rebounds and you lost that tonight. Weston hits both. He now has seven. Big night for the bench for Middle Tennessee. 26 points compared to just one for Western Kentucky. Anderson fouled on the drive. I think they're going to get Dish on that. Dishman. First against Dishman, seventh against Middle. What a job Nick McDevitt has done. Certainly has to be the front runner for Conference USA Coach of the Year for winning just five games last year. Going to win 22. Tonight, that's one of the biggest turnarounds in the entire country behind Towson and Iowa State. And they were picked dead last in the preseason poll for Conference USA. Anderson hits the first. And a lot of that is because probably there's so many new faces on this Blue Raider team, whether it's freshmen or transfers, that you didn't know what you had. But to get a guy like Josh Jefferson in the transfer portal from Green Bay, Wisconsin, to come in and He's such a prolific three-point shooter as Dishman 
is going to put an exclamation point on this one. But so much unknown coming into this season for Middle Tennessee. And as soon as the schedule flipped to conference play, this team has gelled and played exceptionally well. Going to win their 13th conference game this season. After going 3-13, a mere turnaround for Middle Tennessee as they will lock up first place in the Eastern Division in Conference USA. Lawrence will finish with the windmill. McDevitt not happy about it. But Blue Raider fans certainly have something to celebrate tonight as Middle Tennessee knocks off Western at the Glass House 69 to 52, undefeated at home in 2022. Jake, what a fantastic basketball game Middle Tennessee played. A lot of times when you come in against an opponent who is wounded like Western Kentucky was tonight, you get their best game, and that's exactly what Middle Tennessee got. They got as, as good as Western could provide them tonight with the roster they had, and Middle Tennessee was able to find a way to surmount that effort and get the victory. For the tenth time in this rivalry that dates all the way back to 1914, Middle Tennessee has swept the season series against Western Kentucky. Middle Tennessee with a 17-point win. And as you see right there, the final stats for tonight game, not the prettiest game offensively. Obviously, Western Kentucky shorthanded tonight. But neither did Middle Tennessee in terms of offensively really have it going for them. But coming away with a 17-point win. Yeah, those uh, shooting percentages don't really show you that it was an offensive struggle for both squads in the second half. Middle Tennessee did a nice job forcing WKU into 13 turnovers while protecting the ball themselves, committing only 10. Middle Tennessee had eight players score points tonight. And six of them hit threes as Middle went 10 from 36 from distance, and that was the difference especially off the bench, 26 points off the bench for the Blue Raiders tonight compared to just one for Western Kentucky. So for Dwayne Hickey and our entire Media Arts Productions crew, I'm Jake Rose saying so long from the Murphy Center where the final score tonight is Middle Tennessee 69, Western Kentucky 52. This has been a presentation of ESPN from the Murphy Center. So long, everybody.